This is going to be a talk about creating multimedia prints. So I use a lot of different techniques when it comes to making my multimedia prints. And one of the ways I like to start is with monotype. And monotype is a method of printmaking, meaning it's an indirect method. And I create an image using ink and different uh, materials like water soluble oil pastels. And I put those onto a plexiglass or acrylic plate. And I can use stencils, I can use brayers, which are those little rollers. I can add, I can subtract, I can roll the ink on, I can wipe it off, I can draw, and then when it comes time to transfer the image to paper, what I do is I usually dampen the paper because that helps absorb the ink and especially the water-soluble pastels better and I lay the dampened sheet of paper over the plate and then I roll it through a press. And the press is nice because it really helps give a very close contact to from the paper to the plate um, and helping that ink and um, drawing materials get absorbed into and onto the paper. So that's really helpful. Um, you could hand burnish them, but I, since I have a press in my studio, I use the, the large etching press. And once I have printed and transferred the image from the plate onto the paper, then I let it dry. And then it's time to either create another drop, another um, monotype print with more painting and more rolling, um, or I can add other types of printmaking such as screen printing or lithography. So when I'm creating a lithograph, I either draw on a aluminum plate like I'm doing here, or a limestone, and I use a greasy pencil or grease um, material that's been dissolved and um, kind of soluble in water, and I either paint or I draw the image onto, directly onto the plate, and then I process it using um, different types of solutions with gum arabic and acid such as nitric acid or tannic acid and that enables the plate or the stone to hold that image so I can roll ink greasy ink oil-based ink onto it and and then repeat the process and I can print multiple copies of that image I can do this in different colors if I chose to do um, you know, any color I wanted. I could roll the image up in in a color, say the reddish, sort of burgundy color um, that some of these prints I have done in. Uh, and then I can just keep repeating the process and printing over and over again. And the nice thing is I can layer these on top of other lithographs. I can layer them on top of the mono type and I can give that image sort of a new environment and a new look. I also really like to use screen printing, especially for a final um, kind of layer because screen printing allows me to create both hand-drawn and hand-designed um, images, but also photographic images. I can contrast that type of imagery with the painterly aspects of the monotype and the more hand-drawn aspects of the lithography. 
and here I'm creating a reduction uh, screen print. So there's five layers that need to be lined up each time and that's going to create this image of the scale. And I'm, I can register them with this plastic that I, plastic film that I put um, I print on first and then when I drop the screen down I know where it's going to land so I can just be really precise about where I place it onto my print and it's nice because there's no borders you know there's no embossing or anything around the image like some other types of printmaking so it can really go anywhere I can run it off the page if I wanted to and it's again the graphic quality really um, contrasts nicely with some of the other images that I do. I also like to print on um, not just the paper itself but sheer transparent papers, transparent fabrics, and that way I can layer over the previous print and kind of push that previous layer back in space and get different um, qualities. And then once all that printing is done, then it's time to kind of layer them up. So I'll take the transparent prints and decide where I want to overlay them and kind of obscure parts of the print and reveal other parts if um, parts of the image need um, you know, more boldness or more subtlety, I can decide that. Um, while I'm doing this sort of collage and I use a, a variety of materials and glues to adhere the materials onto. Um, what you don't see is some of these sheer papers I spray them out using a spray glue, spray adhesive, and that allows me to really keep the integrity of the paper and place it wherever I want on the print. So it, it keeps it nice and flat. It doesn't warp it like a water-based or a wet glue might. Um, and I can place it, you know, wherever I need to. And the the sheerness of the of the paper stays the same. So it looks pretty much like what it's. I can arrange it, and it will stay the way that it looks when I put it on there. You know, I can cut out these prints, I can arrange them, I can trim them and fragment them, and it's, it's a pretty long process just to try to kind of get it all oriented and, and looking right, and it's a back and forth, you know, which, what does this print need, what does the, another print need? Am I adding too much? Do I need to take away? Do I need to obscure some parts? Do I need to bring some elements out? Again, it's a lot of decision making. It's a lot of sort of push and pull with how I, I do that. So it takes time and I try to allocate, you know, enough time so I'm not rushing through this and I can really get a good sense of of how things are working so they can ultimately be successful prints. And then lastly, I will take some drawing materials, whether that's pencil or um, again, the water soluble oil pastels or even just regular oil pastels. And if parts need to be accentuated or softened, I can do that right on the print. So these really are mixed media in the sense that, yes, they're prints and they're multiple types of printing, lithography, screen printing, uh, monotype, but they're also collaged and drawn on and sometimes painted on. So that mixture of the media is really what makes them unique and gives them their depth and alludes to the story that I'm telling, which is the traces of history that exist uh, on me in the present and my ancestors and ancestral history really coming full circle and influencing how I am living and 
raising my family. So there you have it. <laughs>